Hey, what's going on YouTube? Brian here with Blackburn in Tech. Okay, so if you wouldn't mind, go ahead and click the like, subscribe, click the no bell notification if you want to get emails. If you don't, don't click that bell thing. Um, it helps YouTube and helps me improve the channel. Okay, so enough of that. So, in one of the previous videos or future videos, whichever way you're watching this, we created an SSL VPN portal. Um, and which works very well, and SSL VPN is very commonly used today. Um, but there's an IPsec VPN. Why would I use one or the other? Well, it also comes it comes down to what you want. Um, IPsec VPNs, you get a little more granularity on in control of it. Um, some of them are a little more. Uh, you can configure it for more security or worse security if you want. Uh, it comes down to a little more customizable, uh, and it depends on what your needs are for it. Uh, some industries, you can't use them. Uh, other industries, you're, ex you're forced to use them. So let's set up a remote access VPN on a FortiGate. Okay, so joining me over here on my screen, I'm already logged in to save a little bit of time. So we're going to go ahead and do this. Come over here to the VPN section. And then at the top, you'll see VPN tunnels. And just to prove to you that I didn't pre-configure anything, we have absolutely nothing showing here. So this is the one time that the wizard actually does come in handy. Um, everybody has their opinion on VPN wizards. Um, some areas, this actually works well. Other areas, not so well. But as far as remote access VPN, I've found it to be reliable. Uh, other areas, not as much. But everybody has their preference on this, so I'm going to click Remote Access. And then as you can see, we have a few different options. Are we doing are we doing a client-based VPN, or are we doing a native one? A native one would be more like uh, if, you're, if you, you want it just for your own computer itself, or you're not u using like either one of these two products. Uh, 40 clients is free, so I don't have any objection to just using it. Um, the Cisco one, I honestly don't know. I've never used it, so I'm not going to tell you it's good. I'm not going to tell you it's bad. But if you click on that, you can come over and see, okay, maybe I want it to be Windows native or iOS native. Personally, I, I use mine. like I like I use this one because I find it to be the most simple. And I'm going to call this IP. Oops. And I'm just going to do it that way. I'm not going to go crazy on naming. So incoming interface, it's going to be my way in. Um, we could do a signature or pre-shared key. Pre-shared key is normally the, the most common. Um, I'm going to do the most secure one. Obviously, you guys know in a production one, you won't do that. Sorry about that. So there's what my pre-shared key is. Like I said, that's not something you would want to have in a production one. But lab, it's fine. So the VPN user groups, we already had it created a VPN user group. In our last episode, or the the, VP, the SSL VPN one, where we already have a account named Bob in there. So I'm going to go ahead and just use the same one. If you don't, you can go ahead and create one, or just click the school create from here, and it'll, it'll let you create one. Click next. Local interface. So what interfaces am I expecting this to have access to? So I currently just have a LAN one, and this 40 link doesn't go to anything. So I'm going to say my LAN network you can access. And then my LAN addresses. Maybe I do have a different things. I'm just gonna say all because I really don't care. Yeah, they can. He can actually no. I, I need to keep security in mind. So I'm gonna say this LAN network. So client address range. So this is an address range you can pull out of thin air just to make sure it's not used anywhere on your network. Um, 192.168.99 is my current network, so I'm not gonna use that one. So I'm gonna use 88. Dot five uh, through one nine two dot one six eight dot eighty eight dot. Mm, what do you guys think? Ten sounds fair. And I put a dash in here. I'm in a dot. Um, so I'm only going to give myself a few different IP addresses. Um, and you guys can you can set that to how you'd like uh, for your own network setups. Um, personally, I'm going to use the system DNS because I don't have anything internally on here to show. If I did, um, allow endpoint registration, and we're going to allow that. 
IPv4 split tunneling. Like I said, if we wanted to not do that, if we wanted just to send everything, that's why I actually did specify this up here. Um, because I don't want to have all traffic coming into my firewall. So I click next. And I still cannot give these this control, especially because that way you are using the 40 client itself. Um, do I want them to be able to save their password? That might be a security issue for you because if somebody has it saved, um, auto connect, can they, as soon as they start the program, it'll just, will, will I let them even have the option to automatically just jump on the VPN or keep a lot? Do I want it to stay online? Bleh. Um, personally, I don't, I don't like to have any of those checked. I know your users will complain because they, oh, I have to enter my password again. Unfortunately, yes, but it will increase the security. So we come down here, it goes through this little validation. Following up settings should be reviewed prior to creating. So this is what we're doing. And so I'm gonna click create. And as you can see, it went ahead and created that stuff for me. And my, my tunnel's down and all that because I don't have anybody logged on. And then we can go back over here to click our show tunnel list. So here's the VPN settings we said that we created. The reason why I said the SSL VPN has just that simple way, and then this one you can make it either more secure or less secure, because you can change stuff on here that you can't change on the SSL. You can't be as granular as you can on here. So let's go ahead and see what else can we, can we make this more secure? Can we make it a lot less secure? Let's take a look. So from over here, we'll go ahead and click Edit. So both sides have to agree on everything on here. So I'm going to come in here and just look and see what they have set up. So this looks like a basic one, so it's not terrible. But we can come down here and see under their settings, do we have anything that we could actually break stuff with? Do I want auto discovery on sender, exchanging interfaces, IP, tunnel searches? Ooh, I feel like I could... Dead peer retry. Do I want to improve the quality of this this tunnel at the cost of the speed of the tunnel? Uh, dead peer retry. Like how often does it go ahead and try and get get out? Um, like I said, there's some settings here. A lot more you can adjust it actually in the CLI. So I'm going to back out of here because we're not going to adjust those. Um, by default, they do have a pretty decent security setup. I believe it's. AES-128 or 256, and SHA-1 is, I believe, the with Diffie-Hellman groups, if I remember right. Don't quote me on that, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that's that's right. Now we have to have a firewall rule to allow this traffic in on this. So we have our SSL VPN one that we created in the last group. Basically, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to come up here, and we're going to go my IPsec VPN to my LAN, from what address space. I'm just gonna say all of, from here, or wait a minute, we, we, we specify that? It looks like we created, it was nice enough to create us a group. A split IP address range, and I'm gonna allow it to my local network. And always on. And we're gonna allow everything. Under the services, and if I need to, I can NAT this. If I don't want to, I don't have to NAT this one. Um, it depends on your, your environment, on what you have set up. So, so by doing that, now this connection, someone can go into their 40. So if you have 40 client already installed, you can go ahead and just click on that IPsec one, point it to your gateway, which is this address itself. Know that it is going to use the default IPsec port, and it's going to reach out and try and connect, and as long as they have correct correct, correct credentials, let's try that one again, and it will go ahead and let them in. It's, it's not as difficult as a lot of people make that part out to be. The only time it gets difficult is when you're explicitly allowing this and denying that, and then rearranging this and uh, rearranging that for this that's that's where you get into more of the the troubleshooting but for a basic ipsec vpn as you guys saying it really wasn't that difficult uh, especially if we followed the wizard um creating that one by ourselves would have probably taken a little bit more time but yes we could have done it um 
sometimes the wizards aren't as helpful if you're especially if you're peering with different vendors so like if you're, we're doing site to site vpns normally going to be a little more challenging because both sides have to agree a hundred percent versus one side's just phoning in on on our dial in vpn well i hope this has been informative i thank you for watching if you wouldn't mind like i said go ahead and click that like subscribe i know you guys are probably getting tired of hearing this by now but it does help the channel and ultimately helps me make better content and helps youtube reach out to other people to be say hey look this might be something you might like so thanks and go ahead and drop something in the comments if you need anything else have a good day